Hi everybody, it's Matt Halls of Comics Unlimited in the Happy Show. And uh, this video I'm making is about this uh, pecu peculiar comic book that came out uh, based off of a, of a hopeful rock star back in uh, 1991 from Marvel Comics. It was uh, the character Nightcat. And um, I don't really know much about her, even though I remember when this book was advertised and come out. I didn't actually buy it myself when it came out. Um, though it has a nice uh, Joe Jusco painted cover. And, but I just remember whether it was a Marvel Age or some kind of fanzine magazine, uh, you know, they talked about how they were, you know, Marvel was had this deal with this up and coming rock star. They kind of did something similar uh, back in. 1980 when they created uh, the Dazzler character for the, who later would join the X-Men and such. They, in fact, made her a mutant because at the time uh, in 1980 or so, X-Men was start, was on its rise. It was a cult favorite in the, in the comic book industry and it was on its way into becoming a mainstream hit for Marvel on the success of the Dark Knight or the Dark Phoenix saga and that sort of thing. And so it was mandated by editorial that um, they go ahead and I'm going to move this a little bit. I think those fan blade shades is, is because of the focus to go out. Anyway, bear with me. If the focus, if you see the camera kind of going back and forth because of the focus, oh well. We'll just deal with it. <laughs> anyway, uh, look, you see the dragon back there. This is going to be like a jumping video. Anyway, I get back on to the, uh, to the actual discussion at hand. Look, there's a comic book box right there, too. Um, so, so Nightcap was, uh, well, back to Dazzler real quick. Dazzler, um, there was actually talk in that period of time when she was being created of, uh, doing a movie with her. And there's a People's Magazine cover with Bo Derek, uh, who was a big star at that time off the success of the movie 10, um, which was a comedy with her and Dudley Moore. And it went right, uh, what was her other movie right around that time? Uh, but, you know, it was like right in that time period. And, and her husband was a, a director, you know, famous director at that point. Though he wasn't a celebrated director necessarily, but he was famous. Uh, John Derrick, most, more famous for the woman he married than anything he actually filmed himself. Uh, but they were going to, you know, possibly have done a, uh, a movie of Dazzler. It never came to be. But... Marvel, I think, was working with Casablanca Records or something about Dazzler, and and then she went through a few designs. Actually, she was a black woman in the original designs, and then you know became a, a white character for whatever reason. Uh, and uh, she was designed by John Romita Jr., if I remember correctly, the outfit and everything. Which coincidentally, he's the one who did the cover that first introduced her in the in Uncanny X Men one thirty, I think. Used to know these things off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure I ain't riding on that one, but used to have, not even have to think about it. I'm getting old. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so so there was that whole thing. It's kind of fascinating, the kind of history behind her. But she was great, like I said, just kind of tie into a music thing and all this. Uh, and, and the disco era. She, she came out really when she, she finally got introduced to the comics because she was in the planning stages, I think, since 1978 or so. She was, there was a couple of years there where they were planning, uh, working on the, the concept and prototypical versions of her. And by the time they finally released her, Disco was on the decline. Um, but anyway, uh, so, so, so like I said, that, that was a, a predecessor to Nightcat of sorts. And then, uh, Nightcat, like I said, is based off this woman. Again, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not even looking this up before I make this vlog, so I don't, I'm not looking up all the details. I'm just going off memory on a lot of this, but, uh, so I don't know her name. I don't remember her name, but Nightcat again, I'll show you the cover once more. Um, and see, there were merchandising her on the back of here. Special edition and collector's item t shirt signed by Night, Nightcat and Stanley. Now, this is credit as, uh, Stanley had. Uh, worked on it, like he scripted this book. It's plot by Barry Dutter, but Stanley did script it. So it's one of his last uh, co creations with Marvel. I, um, Alexander or Alexandria Forbes, I guess that could be. I'm just seeing these credits for some uh, lyrics here, and so maybe she, Alexandria was the woman. I don't know. 
who, who was Knight Cowan is what I'm referring to. Dennis Cowan, Cowan, I think I pronounced his name right. He's been a veteran comic book artist for years and years, but I'm never sure if I pronounced that right. Dennis Cowan was the penciler. Jimmy Palamati Pal Pal uh, is the inks. He worked a lot with Joe Casada. And uh, this was when Tom DeFalco was in charge. But anyway, uh, you know, this, this kind of did nice work. Uh, and this looks fine in here. But yeah, there's night, there's old Nightcat on stage. But the reason I'm making this video, and the reason I actually picked up a copy of this, I mean, I, I'm not a collector since I've been selling comics for years. I know it sounds funny but a lot, to a lot of people, but what it is is like, when I decided to sell comics, I'm a big fan. Always have been a fan. Always will be a fan of comic books and stuff. <clears throat> and I would love to kind of, in a sense, have a collection. But I make my living uh, by selling comics. That's that's where I get my bread and butter, so to speak. So therefore, I don't uh, I don't actually collect because if I did, I told them everything great. So why would I pick up Nightcat, especially since it ain't really an expensive book that everybody's clamoring for? Because there's this quirky item, and it's a it's a rare item. That, that Nightcat's not, not real rare, I don't think. It's it came out in the early nineties during the speculator boom, but it's also an obscure character. That I don't know how many people actually bought that book. But uh, but the one thing that is pretty obscure, because again, this is based off a, a person who was an aspiring rock artist. And you say, well, did she record something? Well, yes, she did. She, she recorded the album. And I actually have an album. It's uh, more like a 12-inch yes, 12 single, I guess, really. Uh, number one, House Rule. That's Nightcat in the Flesh. Uh, no. <laughs> That's all I marked on it, though. Bastards. Uh, so it, the actual album's in pretty nice shape. Um uh, you got number one house. I haven't listened to this yet. I got the 12 inch house mix, the 12 inch house dub, the seven inch radio version. <laughs> well, how many radio stations play that? Because uh, it was never, she never reached top 40. The nightcap mix on side B, rock the dub mix, and the seven inch mix. Uh, I'm looking at this again just to see if it does say her name. Maybe one day I'll actually do research before I turn the camera on. Other than just going by my own uh, knowledge on things there. Just to, just so I could give you a little more information. Anyway, but the disc is not in bad shape. Uh, it's in pretty good shape indeed. Uh, I don't know if it's ever played. <laughs> but, I mean, the, you know, the dust cover has some wear again and some pencils. So, I presume somebody listened to it at least once. Uh, so, and I'll, I'll give it a listen I suppose, um, but <laughs> I cap the hero that never really took off, uh, and the rock career never really took off. Might be a lovely woman. I might listen to it and think, hey, she actually has good songs. Uh, I don't know, but um, I just thought that was fascinating because I picked these up as a as a set today from my good buddy Dave at the at the Big E Flea Market here in Evansville. He had these packaged together. I thought, well, the comic comes with the record, and, I'm, and the record's obscure and interesting. Uh, the, the artifact of Marvel pop, pop rock history, so why not? Pop rock history. It's very much uh, on the low on the level, I'm sure, of, of the actual history. But it's still fascinating anyway. And um, I thought I'd share that with you. So, anyway... That's that's my vlog for this day, and I'll talk to you another time. And maybe I'll do a review of her album on my next vlog because I'll sh I should have listened to it by then. Oh, I should just mention I think there was a CD that she put out, maybe even the vinyl of the version of the CD. Because I I I looked it up when I was looking at it today. I did I did look that part up, and um uh, and I saw the uh, the record. Uh, anyway, there was a CD out there. I don't know if it was released at the same time. I don't know. Anyway, so, yay! Talk to you next time. I'm, I'm using the mouse down here. I'm on my computer. I'm using a mouse when uh, this is on my phone. Ah, it's been a long day.